In this video, we're gonna talk about how hustling is a trap. We're gonna talk about the dangers of starting a business with no money. And then we're gonna talk about what's going on with me. So let's start off with the first thing. Hustling is a trap. Right now, there are many YouTube channels that have challenges, that have uh, 24 hour challenges, that have um, how you can make money really, really fast. And there's a need for that. You know, um, I'm just in the position of transitioning because quick money hustles. If you can find something that you can have little experience, little to no money and make a lot of money, enjoy it while it lasts. Because what's going to happen is the marketplace is going to flow to whatever that is. Right now I'm watching a lot of ads and I am seeing that some of these, cause I'm starting to figure out exactly what they're doing, their representation, their presentation, what they're doing. And I'm starting to see, um, the gaps and holes into what they're doing. But everyone is looking for a hustle to make money really quickly, to make money really fast because you have needs, you, you're in a bad situation. Um, essentially, BGS, Igmore, and Erica Williams did a video that 42% of Americans make $18,000 a year or less. BGS, Igmore is a pretty thorough dude, so I don't believe he would put that out there unless he had researched it. And this is where so many people are because you know from my own research i know that 80 million americans make thirty-three thousand dollars a year or less and then when you move the number up to sixty thousand, so if you're in a position to start a business with money you dramatically cut out your competition because most people don't have no money because essentially i'm starting to see the segmentation of the marketplace I'm starting to see, um, cause essentially I'm getting ready to run ads. I'm getting ready to change my business. Um, I am beginning to see something cause my assistant who is looking for YouTube channels so we can run ads on them. Um, uh, I'm finding out that many YouTube channels are not built, con not constructed com correctly. And there, th this is a problem when you want to use this YouTube channel to run advertising on. So, most people, I would say 99% of the YouTube channels are constructed incorrectly for making money. And th this is something that we're learning, but you know, everyone's looking for a hustle. I'm a hustler and hustling is sexy. You know what I learned when I was in the storage auction business, which was a hustle and it was a trap because when you start to make money that way and money comes in quickly, you, you get addicted to it. So I did not know the storage auction business was a hustle, nor did I know it was a trap until my partner was diagnosed with colon cancer and I got sick. And at this point, when the business owners had to leave the business, the business collapsed. And that's what's going to happen with hustling. Most hustles will collapse if you A, can't do it, B, get tired of it, C, are incapacitated so as long as you are good to go and you're hustling and you're out there money comes in but if you run into a problem because um i go back now because I, I have a whole different perspective on the hustle versus the business and <clears throat> right now the majority of content on youtube is aimed to teach people how to hustle like one of the big challenges, how to set up a Shopify store in 24 hours. And I understand the premise of it. You want to set up a store and start making money so you can spend money. And it's the different posture and orientation between someone who wants to hustle and someone who wants to build a business. Because if you take your time to build your business, it will not collapse. Like this is one of the things this, this happened to me. I was selling the Louis Philippi bed on Craigslist for about two years. And my first year, my first week, I sold 15 beds and at $300 profit per bed, I made close to $5,000 pure profit. 
it was good. It was easy. <clears throat> it was like, I go to the coaster, pick up the beds, run the ads on Craigslist. And then the people would answer the ads and I would sell the beds. It worked well for two years. And then a competitor came into the marketplace and completely put me out of business. Uh, I could have lowered the price, but see luxuries once tasted become necessities. So I was used to making like, you know, 250 to $350 profit per bed. And I could have stayed in the game, but then my profits would have went down to like a hundred bucks a bed or $70 a bed. And at that point, cause once again, when you're doing something and you're making money a certain way, you don't want to do that thing and make less money. And that was the thing I was facing because I was just sitting there because it, it was just a, such a dark proposition for me that I would be doing the same level of work and I would be making 70% less money. That's a no go in pretty much anyone's book. So I just stopped doing it. But that's what happens when you construct a hustle. Hustles are very fragile. Hustles are they're not durable. They cannot withstand an illness. They cannot withstand something. You, you're getting sick. And this is what, based upon the position that life has put people in, I understand why people are looking for fast money hustles. I understand why there are so many people who are running these ads to, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to run ads. You don't have to kill no, you don't have to do nothing. And you're going to make $30,000 a month. I, I see the appeal of that. I see that. And you know, it, it, it brings me back to before the internet, when I used to get entrepreneur magazines, success magazines, these little magazines, you go to the grocery store and I would order these products from the back of the magazine. And that's what I see happening here on YouTube with the ads and Facebook and stuff. Cause I really don't see too many Facebook ads. I really don't, but I'm not on Facebook that tough. Um, I see that and it's, it's just a, a, re a repeat of what I went through because I was out there buying all of those crappy products and stuff. And it was, it was, it was interesting. It was really, really interesting. Now let's talk about starting a business with no money. This is dovetailing with the hustle mentality. You want to start a business with no money. You know why that's dangerous? Let's go back to 42% of Americans make $18,000 a year or less. 80, like 50%, wow, like 60% of Americans make $33,000 or less. And 75% of Americans make less than $60,000 a year. So what happens when you are in a business that you can start with little to no money? The competition is going to be massive. Why? Because there's no people, there are people with no money. The number of people who actually, you know, with the ATM receipt, cause that's gonna, that's gonna change. I'm gonna film another one next week. Uh, the ATM receipt game, you know how many people literally at the moment have six figures in their personal checking account? Less than 5% of the country less than 5% of the country. So that is 300 and something million people who don't have any money. And that is your competition because you know, it's kind of funny in the dating arena. I met this chick and she said, I'm not competing with those young girls. And in her mind, she felt that she was in her own lane, but from the dating market page perspective, she indeed was competing with those young girls, whether she wanted to or not. And that's the thing. When you start a business with no money or you find a tactic or some type of money scheme that you can go in with no money, no experience, and you can make a lot of money, it's going to be temporary. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, YouTube. I used to be in the resale community and I saw people selling items that I used to sell for 350, 500, 600 bucks on eBay. Right. And they were like, this item sells really well. And then they would put it on YouTube and do a video and then you can go to eBay and you could just see the price just dropping, 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 dropping. Cause so many people it's supply and demand. When I would put that item up on eBay, it wasn't that many on eBay, but when YouTubers came, it's like, this sells good, go out, be on the lookout for this. And then literally a thousand people will find that item, then put it on eBay and it become a pricing game. It becomes a commodity at that point. 
And this is what's going to happen with these fast money tactics and stuff, because um, I don't know anything about wholesaling. I understand the theory of wholesaling. Find someone who has a distressed property in need, get them under contract, flip their contract to a flipper or someone. I understand that. But the number of people who are running ads to wholesaling courses, I feel, I feel, I don't know, I'm not in that industry, that it's just a matter of time before that becomes saturated. It's just a matter of time. You want to know why? You don't need a lot of money to get into wholesaling. All you need is a phone, a little budget to run some ads, and you need to look. So the lower the entry to that thing, the more people who will sign up for that thing. And I, I, I just, because I'm seeing a lot of real estate channels. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people talking about wholesaling. I'm seeing a lot of people. And, you know, this is totally unrelated to the content of this video, but I'm going to throw this out this why are there so many people with houses that are in need of repair? Because people don't have money. People don't have money. That's why there's so many houses that are in distress that need repair to be brought up to update it so they can sell for a current marketplace price because people don't have no money, which goes back to trying to start a business with no money, trying to hustle with no money and create that. And also here's something else too. If you start with no investment and with sweat equity, it's going to take you a long, long, long time to get to a point where you're making some real money with your business. It's just facts. It's just facts. So there are many dangers to starting a business with no money. It's very attractive because you don't have that money to get started. It's very, really attractive. However, if you look at the number of businesses that you can start with little to no money, businesses that you can get into, the average person is going to find these businesses very challenging to downright difficult to scale and to get them to grow and to build businesses. Like, like I said, I think wholesaling is about to be saturated. I think it's just a matter of time before trucking is saturated. Because right now there's all these people who are like, get in the truck and get you one truck, get you a driver, make this money. It's just a matter of time. Because let's go ahead and have this conversation about funding. And you know, there, there are people who don't have money and then there are people who want to rush to get business credit to get funding. I had a friend who had a job, he was making $250,000 a year. Uh, he had really good credit, so he was able to borrow $1.8 million. And he started the business and 28, 29 months later, he was out of business because he knew what he was doing. Fortunately for him, he was able to get another job making 350. So he was able to live his life, pay off his debts and obligations and go on with life. So even if you're in a position to get funding, um, one of the things that you should be aware of is if you don't have experience, that can really backfire on you. So there are many people who are looking to develop business credit and business it and credit limits are a facility of your income. Like you might be able to get a business credit card with a 720 FICO in your job income, but you're not going to get the big boy limits. You're not going to get the $50,000 limits. You're not going to get the seven. You're not going to get those limits. You may get five to $10,000, <clears> which is going to be higher than your average credit card as from your personal credit. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you, you've got these situations that are going on, right? You got people who are out here looking for funding and everyone is trying to leverage a little into a lot. Uh, this is why literally YouTube channels have exploded over this Wall Street bets and um, GameStop thing. Literally, I've seen channels like literally grow overnight because people are looking for that unicorn where I can take $500 and flip it to 50,000. This is what people are looking for. And I have a feeling that people are looking for these things is because they have no faith in themselves. They don't have no faith that they can build something that's going to make them that kind of money. That's why I think that people are 
desperate for these type of opportunities and desperate to get hustle and desperate to start a business with no money because they're, they're desperate. They're really, really desperate. And this is one of the things that I'm seeing in the place. And this is why I am leaving the hustle spear. I'm getting out of that because the number of channels that talk about how to hustle, how to put something together, because it's all about speed, 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 speed. Put this together, make this money really, really, really fast. And I know from starting a business that it's been sustainable and durable, that that's not how you build sustainable and durable businesses. You can build a hustle fast, you can build a service business fast. And you know, let's talk about that real quick, service business. You know, I've been asked, you know, what kind of business can I start with little, no money, little, no expertise and make money really quickly? A service business. That's the free 99. I put that out there for you guys. I'm not going to start a service business because that's not what I want to do. And there needs to be this understanding that if I put something out to help you, that's to help you where you are. I don't have to start a service business. Here's some information that you know, I never put out before. I don't think it's in the video. When I came to YouTube, I had $300,000 in the bank. So even though I did not invest a lot of money into my business on YouTube, I had money to live off of and I didn't have to worry about working a job, doing you know Uber, Instacart or whatever. So I was able to focus on my business and get it to the point where 62,000 the first year, 92,000 the third, second year, and 1.5 million the third year. So I was able to focus on building that asset. And even with that, it still took three years. It did not happen like that. And once again, I, I think there's a lot of desperation out here that people are just thirsty and starving for money. And let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with me. I think one of the best decisions I made <clears throat> was to run those ads. And as my friend says, buy data. Um, I came across some information that I did not know. I was operating on warm traffic and warm traffic is way more forgiving than cold traffic. And this is something that we're going to get into the YouTube super creative. Um, <clears throat> here's the, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the schedule today. The other day I did the money management course for civilians. Yesterday I did money management for corporate citizens. Today I'm going to do um, the credit course. And then this weekend I'm going to jump into, um, the corporate stuff. And one of the things that I am really interested in is, well, I, I've come to find out is I did not know that I had built my business incorrectly for cold traffic because I've been operating on warm traffic. So I didn't know I, I had no clue. And this kind of goes back to one of my favorite movies, Confessions. And it has Ben Kingsley, Alec Baldwin. And there's this pivotal moment in the movie where he talks about it isn't that people don't know what the right thing is to do. Uh, people don't know what is the right thing. Once they know, they do it. And that that's kind of where I was. And I think that's where a lot of you are. A lot of you are ready to pull a trigger on something, but you don't know what you want to pull the trigger on. So this leaves you in the state of suspended animation where you're just kind of like waiting, waiting, waiting. But <clears throat> If you look at what happened, once I had the right information, the right direction, you saw how fast I changed the YouTube channel name. I shut down uh, the Facebook group, 30 Days to 2500. I shut down uh, Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. I shut down B School for Hustlers. And then I created these new training. That happened very, very quick because I knew, I, I knew what I needed to do. I had direction. These five weeks are going to be really intense for me because I've got to put out a lot of training and creatives, but it opened up my eyes and also the education of watching all of these ads. Um, I'm not going to run an ad that's going to tell you that you're going to make all of this money and absolutely have to do nothing. That's just rings false to me. That's just not the reality of starting a business. So I have to be creative <clears throat> and I found out that I'm really good at creating ads because my ads had high view rates and I was able to get people to the webinar. So I'm gonna start running those again, probably uh, beginning of March. But one of the things that has happened is 
I'm going through a transformation because I didn't understand, just like when this new competitor came into the marketplace, I had no clue to the number of hustle channels. I had no clue how many there were. I mean, they're, they're, they're literally all over the place and I'm just sitting there like, ah. So this is why, you know, until I created the corporate toolbox and stuff, my sales were kind of going down, down, down. And I began to understand, cause you, you had a lot of people who were out here talking about creating hustles and I didn't understand cause I wasn't looking in the right places. So also to go to starting business with money. Right now I have like $400,000 in personal credit with nothing on my personal credit cards. And I got 150,000 in business credit with maybe 10,000 on the Wells Fargo card. And then I've got money in my corporate account and I have money in my personal account. This is the time to make moves. The time to, there's a book, Harvey McKay, dig your well before you're thirsty. So while I'm flush, this is the time to experiment. This is the time to open up new platforms. This is time to introduce new pro. This is the time. I've just never been one person to wait and to operate from a sense of desperation. You know, the last 12 years, let's see, year one, year two, year three, year three got me flush. And since year three, I've always been moving ahead of the curve. It's never been, well, I got to do this to make this money like right now, or, you know, bad, bad things are going to happen. I've, I've just not been in that position in nine years. I haven't been in that position, but I have learned that when you see you, your business has a deteriorating orbit. Before you crash, you need to make moves. And I think that was one of the best things I ever did was to run those ads and buy that data, as my friend said, because it really opened up my eyes to a lot of stuff I was doing wrong. I was doing a lot of things wrong. And now that since I bought that data and now I put this with what I already know in my experiences, now it's like, Oh, this is why this happened. Oh, this is why this went this way. Oh, this is why this has happened. So now I have a greater understanding of what's going on. And as someone in the comments has chimed out, what I'm building now is going to be more durable. It's going to be something I can sell for years and years and years versus just appealing to warm traffic and putting this stuff together. So yeah, that's what's going on with me. And it's a very interesting journey because I've never been sitting on this much cash before. And I know that many people is like, you should invest once again. Um, thank you for your advice. I appreciate you looking out, but I'm not going to invest that cash. My goal is to get even more cash to make a big boy investment. That's my goal. You know, I think I did a video talking about why that stuff just isn't really appealing to me. So that's my goal. Like once again, I have a financial device that generates cash every month. And I have YouTube revenue. I have Cameron, that's Cameron Media Arts. That's the YouTube revenue. Savage Consulting Services. That's the online course revenue. Consulting revenue, I'm not really focused on that, but that could be a revenue stream if I really wanted it to. So at the moment, I have three streams of revenue and I'm looking to expand that and I'm going to be very pragmatic and you know, essentially since I have money, I'm going to make some investments in my business. I'm going to redo some things, set some stuff up and make some investments in my business so I can grow and build. Cause essentially with my knowledge of what's in the hustle space and since I'm the leaving the hustle space and my assistant, you know, she does a lot of research. There are not that many YouTube channels that talk about really building businesses. It's all about some kind of money scheme or wholesaling. It's something fast, fast, fast. So with the, the transformation of the channel, I know I'm going to lose people and I'm ready for that. I know I'm going to lose people because people are just like, look, man, Hey G, I need to make some money real quick. Baby Jojo needs some Pampers and some Similac. My mom, my, my ex-wife, she owe me on the, I need to make some money quick. I need to make some moves. And this right here creates a, another trap. 
The only time that you start making moves that are either because of desperation or under extreme pressure. Like, look at what I just did. I literally tore down my platforms, changed the name to just really, really, but there's no pressure. There's no pressure on me. It's just, oh, I want my business to be long-term and sustainable, so I need to make these moves. And that's why I made those moves. But I am not in a state of desperation. I'm operating from a sense of internal urgency that you need to make these moves. And like, honestly, I, I feel really good about that. You know, when I made that move, cause you know, when you make a decision and you make a bad decision, sometimes you can't sleep. I've just been sleeping like a baby and, and I'm really excited at the new direction. And I know because I'm making these changes that I'm going to lose people. And honestly, I'm going to lose a lot of the yard birds. That's pretty much what I'm going to lose. A lot of the yard birds, a lot of the people who are in a bad situation financially, don't know how to handle their money, who are desperate for an answer, who are desperate for the free 99 because they don't have no money. And during this transformation, what's going to happen is I am going to shift my audience and appeal to people with money because we're going to be talking about starting businesses with money. Because when you start a business with some money, you dramatically lower your competition. You, um, cause essentially that whole space of the free 99 of the people with no money. And this is something that I intuitively knew, but really did not pay attention until recently. I made a video years ago, how to start a business with no money. The video did really, really well. And I also understood that I was bringing in an audience of people who had no money. So I was bringing in people who could not afford my products. So it was like, from a YouTube perspective, it was a big win. From a business perspective, it was a big old L. It was a big L. Because essentially, I would be better off if I was bringing in 100 people a month who could spend 10,000 a month versus bringing in 300,000 people a month who couldn't spend $10. That's the math, you know, that's the math. So. We're going to be talking about some more interesting uh, perspectives and we're going to be talking about building businesses and we're going to be talking because, you know, there, there's this another thing like uh, why build a business when you can buy one as if that is simple. And I'm going to do a whole video on that because that that that's just crazy to me because um, there is what I call the Instagram royalty. And, you know, um, I'm not a member of the Instagram royalty. I'm not a member of that business click. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm a free agent. I am like, um, D David born, born identity. I I'm like that. I'm out here freelancing, you know, so I'm not a member of those clicks because I see how they work and I see how people get involved in them. And I am building my own fan base. I am building my own click. I am building my own army, so to speak. So it's, it's really, really, really different, but that's what's going on with me. Now the links to everything are below. And like I said, next five weeks, uh, there should be in the corporate, the art of holding, there should be 35, 40 hours of training, which is a lot for an online course. Most online courses are three to four hours. Um, this is going to be a lot. It's going to be really robust. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be interesting. And we're going to get, and once again, I just want to say this. If you bought the corporate toolbox, you get the new training, you're going to get more. And if you sign up for the art of holding right now, you're going to get a lot. And the price is going to go up probably the end of March. The end of March is when I'm going to go up because I got to design this for cold traffic. Because essentially, spending that bread and the five thousand dollars, I was like, "Oh, this is why this isn't working." I, I created the ad. The ad was working. I created the webinar. The webinar was working, but the offer wasn't working because the offer, it was booty for cold traffic to warm traffic. You know, because essentially, when I sell a product to you and you remember warm traffic, you've seen 20, 30 videos. Maybe you've had a few questions you've asked in the comments. So it's a totally different party but all the links below, and there may be even another platform because I'm gonna do something for the disruptive men, but that's gonna come a little later because I, I, I gotta spend the next five weeks working on this and getting this straight and getting this sexy and set up. So I'm gonna be working on that. But yeah, that's what's going on with me. 
and essentially today, yesterday, the day before yesterday, we did the um, money management course for civilians. Yesterday, I did the money management course for corporate citizens. Today, I'm gonna work on the credit portal. And then tomorrow, we're gonna get into the, or maybe some point today, we're gonna get into the um, shifting of certain things from the court, like once again, if you are a member of the corporate toolbox, you're not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna put the new content where you can access it, but I'm gonna move stuff over to the um, art of holding. And also everyone, you know, if you're in the corporate toolbox, you've already received an email with a link. You're getting the money management course and getting the credit course. <clears throat> so that, you know, essentially I'm gonna keep those in two different platforms, but uh, I'm able, I've already sent that out. So a lot of people have signed up for that. And then um, we're going to get off into some more stuff. So, yeah, that's it. So good morning. If you have any questions or comments, let me know what you're thinking about this video. And I will see you in the next one.